Hey folks, it's been a minute. My name's Nick Taylor. I'm a staff software engineer at Netlify and I'm streaming again on my own stream, livecoding.ca. Uh, been pretty busy ramping up at Netlify, so I haven't really streamed in about like a month and a half. So there may be some kinks in today's stream, but I'm feeling pretty confident that things won't blow up. But anyways, yeah, I'm here today with Anthony Campolo, who's a Redwood JS core team member, among other things. Thanks for popping on, Anthony. I'm super stoked to learn about Redwood today. And uh, yeah, just let the folks know who you are and what you're up to. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, Nick. This will be a lot of fun. We've already done some streams before, back when you were doing the the Dev2 stream. I came on for, for Step Zen. And that was actually how I think yeah, yeah. you and I first kind of got to know each other, is you you know Lucia really well, yeah. my, my former coworker. But yeah, now I actually work at um, QuickNode doing blockchain Web3 stuff. So that's a lot of fun. So that'll be a stream for another time if your audience would find that interesting. But today we're going to be talking about Redwood JS. And Redwood JS is a really interesting framework that I've been involved with for a very long time. And it actually has been kind of the stepping stone for launching my entire career. So telling like both now <clears throat> my history and then the history of Redwood, they're all kind of like entwined with each other. So I can tell them both at the same time. So okay, okay. when I was in my mid to late 20s, I decided to make a career pivot to get into like coding. So yeah, origin story. I was yeah. <laughs> originally a music teacher and did about a year of like classroom teaching of like a wind ensemble and marching band and that kind of stuff. And I like, I loved music and I loved teaching music and I really enjoyed, there was a summer camp where I would teach like rock band at, I thought that was really cool. Okay. But doing the, the whole kind of like traditional, like marching band wind ensemble thing is like, it wasn't really how I came up into music. So it was like, I appreciate it, but I didn't really like love it. And okay. there's just like so many things about like being a classroom teacher that I wasn't really into either. So like the environment didn't really like gel with, the kind of teaching that I enjoyed doing. So I kind of ended up in a position where like I had this degree that could only really lead to one <laughs> type of paying job that I didn't want to do. So I yeah, yeah. got into to coding and I think you were you were a career switcher too, I think. Is that the case? Like No, I wasn't a career switcher, but I was I feel like my origin story is kind of boring because it's like I don't want to say it's a classic story, but you know, when like, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. like I, I did go to university, but, and I, and I studied computer science, but it was really just because of a <laughs> few things. I was just like, I was pretty decent in math and, and, uh, they have something here in, in Quebec called CJEP. It's like grade 11 and sorry, grade 12 and 13. Uh, do the States go to grade 13 or is it only? No, grade we. 12 yeah and then we don't call it 12 we call it being a senior okay okay yeah because in the other provinces in canada there's grade 12 and 13 but in quebec they have cjep and it's kind of like pre-university and it's it's actually kind of cool because like i mean university can be expensive and this costs way less and you know i started off in pure and applied sciences because you know it was just like i guess i'll do that i really don't know because i don't know if you had friends growing up where they're like I know I'm going to be this when I'm like, you know, 22 or whatever. Like there's one person I knew, like they wanted to I mean, be a doctor all their life, you know, but I mean, I knew I wanted to be a musician. So it's like, you know, the, most of people I knew who were quite certain that they knew what they were going to be, wanted to be something that they probably didn't end up being. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's just kind of funny. Cause like I ended up taking computer science. I did o okay in it, but it, this was like pre like boot camps and stuff. They weren't even teaching like, internet courses really it was like so basically all the stuff i learned for web was like you know on notepad.exe initially you know that's how i learned html and javascript and css and stuff and then other things changed along the way but yeah over time i just got really interested in it and outside of school is when i started learning more which is kind of funny you know like you're supposed to apply yourself at tight at school and then me it was like I was playing rugby and doing other things. And then it was like, oh, after school, now I'm done. I'm like learning all these things and, and I still enjoy learning things. So, so it's, it's kind of boring in that sense because it's not like, you know, I was hacking the matrix when I was 
just fresh out of the womb and whatever, you know? So it's like, that. that's why I say it's boring. Maybe it's not boring, but I enjoy what I do. Yeah. So no complaints. Yeah, no, I think that's a, you know, it's boring, but at the same time as like having a not boring story, it's like you, <laughs> it's much better to have the boring story because the, the, the interesting yeah, stories yeah. are not actually that, that fun to live. <laughs> Cause so, so I, you know, so I got this, this degree that ended up being, you know, kind of useless to me. So then I ended up not really knowing what I was going to do with my life. So I spent okay. four years running a performing arts summer camp. So I had mentioned how I was teaching music for like, I would teach like rock band to yeah. like middle school and high schoolers, like in the woods, like at camp. So it's like awesome, awesome thing. And I got a chance to like run that company with the dude who was doing it my, and who ended up becoming like a really good friend of mine, Doug. And I did that for four years and it was mostly like admin work. So like I was basically like making sure that the whole year has her getting up to camp, like you plan camp. So you have, you know, all the logistics and getting money for the tuition, just like getting like you know, dietary restrictions and book the buses and, and all that kind of stuff. So I learned a lot about like running yeah, events yeah. and that was great, but I also didn't really enjoy it that much. So eventually I decided to learn to code. And so at this point I was already like my mid to late twenties. And I was like driving for Uber just to like make make ends meet and make money. And while I was doing that, I was also learning to code and trying to like self teach myself. I did that okay. for a while and didn't get very far. And then eventually like broke down, like did a boot camp and did an income share agreement boot camp Lambda School, which is now known as Bloom Tech because they got so much bad press they decided to change their name. So that yeah. gives you a little I'll glimpse into <laughs> into that world. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. so then I ended up dropping out of the boot camp and here's where redwood enters the story because the reason i dropped out of the boot camp is because i was getting into uh, just open source and kind of following like projects like redwood js which is an uh, open source full stack javascript framework so sorry about what yeah. redwood is so redwood is a full stack framework like a ruby on rails in the sense that it has like like if you imagine like model view controllers how we used to talk about with ruby on rails you would have the model which yeah. is the database model and then you have the controller which which is what mediates between the model the back end and then the front end which is the view and the view is like kind of what you see and so yeah. with <clears throat> redwood you have like a view which is the front end and that's a react app so if you ever used a react app that's the part of redwood that is should be very familiar because you're just writing react on the front end and so when we start going through the the tutorial which are building something out you usually start by you build a page and then you write the page in react and that's like the whole the whole deal it's nice and simple yeah, what okay. gets interesting then is what is the controller and the model so the model is a prisma model so have you ever used prisma Okay. I'm I'm still I'm one of those folks that I haven't used GraphQL that much still like I've had you on before and because you know, Prisma's Prisma is not GraphQL anymore. So Oh, okay. Prisma okay. is just a database ORM. So if you ever oh, okay, okay, different question. Have you ever used an ORM like of any kind? Yeah. Yeah, I use the ORM. I used to do a lot of .net prior to 2016, so there was okay, they great. they have the ORM in there and stuff entity framework i believe so if you've done that that is going to be the most similar redwood is going to be more similar to that than anything else you've, you've done because okay. the rm is such an important part of how this all works because there's a philosophical battle between whether rms are even something we should use at all and this is why for a while yeah, prisma yeah. kind of like refused to call themselves an ORM because like people were saying like, oh, but ORMs are bad. Why would you use an ORM? And then, now everyone loves Prisma and Prisma is like super, super popular. So they, they kind of won the battle on that. But okay. it just translates your JavaScript to SQL. And it mm -hmm. also does your database migrations. So they will essentially write SQL for you to set up your database. So if you want to have okay. a model and you want to have a post, like a blog post that's going to be in the database, you want that post to have title, body, date, and a unique ID, then it okay. will basically, you write a Prisma model to do that. And that'll be one of the, the things we'll do in, um, okay. in the, the tutorial. And then you run a command and it sets up your database and then you're pretty much good to go. So okay. the GraphQL stuff is then the final piece of the puzzle because your React front end makes GraphQL calls into 
your backend, which is a GraphQL server, which is specifically GraphQL Yoga, which is maintained okay. by the guild from Yuri Goldstein. So Redwood and the guild actually like works very closely together and they helped us okay. migrate our GraphQL server off of Apollo server to then Helix and then to Yoga. And so if you don't know anything about GraphQL, then like all these, none of these terms mean anything. So don't worry about that. The great thing about the way Redwood is set up is you don't really need to know or care about the API for the most part. So it's just going to be there okay. and we're going to run commands. That's going to set up our database model and our schemas and then all of our GraphQL stuff. And even like the services that like talk to the database. So for the okay. most part, you really just write a lot of front end stuff. And that's why Redwood was the perfect thing for me as like a beginning kind of like boot camp student who had learned a crap ton of React because they, they basically yeah. taught me, they had front loaded me with all the knowledge I would need for to use a framework like Redwood that fills in all yeah. of the other gaps. So it's like the kind of like the two puzzle pieces like fit together. So it was like it, it enabled me with the specific knowledge I had to go much further. So that's why I got really into it. And then I ended up like start, I started going to like contributor meetings. And then eventually I got like okay. onto the core team. And this is all before I had a job. And so this is why I dropped out of the boot camp because I saw that yeah. I was getting more traction and making better connections and even getting more experience and learning more <laughs> through this whole thing with Redwood. And then yeah. in January 2021, eventually Anant, the CEO of StepZen, reached out to me and said, are you with Redwood or are you open to other opportunities, is, is what he said on LinkedIn. So I can say very definitively that I know Redwood is what got me this job because he thought I was working for Redwood. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's, uh, no, that's great. I mean, I can definitely attest to open source to opening doors. That's how, like, where I was previously working, forum that runs like Dev2 and the code newbies and stuff. I was, I was contributing to open source prior to 2018, but I started contributing to the, at the time it was the Dev2 code base, the practical dev code base. But I had pretty much been contributing to that code base two years before I was hired there. And then when it came to, like, I just, I didn't know the co founders really well, but like I had like a private channel with them because I was contributing a lot. And then like happened to just speak to one of them one day on Twitter and I was interviewing somewhere else. And I just said, Oh, it didn't work out. And then he's like, Oh, by the way, we're hiring. And, you know, and basically I had pretty much done a lot of the front end there. So, and they needed a front end. So, in terms of the interview, you know, it wasn't really like a coding test because like all the stuff I'd done is, was in there and it wasn't just small things. Like I did a lot of stuff with the webpack, components, uh, testing, like all kinds of things. So it 100%, I definitely, and I know B Dougie, uh, Brian Douglas says this too, like it opens up so many doors if, oh, if yeah. you can. I, under I understand not everybody can based on circumstances sometimes, but but I can definitely say if you're able to, it's a great way to for sure meet people, you know, have your work out in the open, you know, and I, I, you know, there's some negatives to open source, obviously, like maintainer burnout and stuff like that. But, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm very, I'm very interested in all of that. And I think there's ways to ways to mitigate that. But yeah, for yeah. someone who's just trying to use that as like a way to break in, though, it's like you're not maintaining anything. Like you barely even know how to like open a PR. So it's like it's like there's a whole separate world of yeah. issues. For for them, it's more so the issues are like actually finding a place that's welcoming and willing to work with someone who's new and like create yeah. the space to enable them to like go further. And that's what Redwood really, really did. And really, David, yeah. especially David Price, like went way out of his way yeah. to like welcome like not only me but like every everyone who's who's been interested in redwood and want to contribute like regardless of whether they like have any coding skills at all at the time yeah yeah no for sure no that's great and it's a it's a super important point i'm just trying to find david's uh twitter i know i follow him the david the david the price david? Okay, the david the price david. is what it is yep the price is right <laughs> there we go cool yeah, pretty right. easy to remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay you got it cool 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 yeah I, I i caught a i forget what conference it was virtual but uh, i caught david he uh, he gave a demo of redwood i can't remember what conference it was i mean i'm sure he's given it several places but yeah, he's done a lot yeah uh, he was the yeah. first guest on my podcast way nice. back in the day yeah 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 so i guess why don't we kind of get into it 
let's maybe let's kind of go from like zero to however far we can get just i'd like to kind of explore like how do we set up because i know one of the things you mentioned is redwood is really trying to remove a lot of friction for people developing you they just you know they just want you to build things right so cool. and you're saying it's sim it's similar to rail so i'm guessing there's a lot is there a lot of convention over configuration i imagine or yep convention over configuration it is considered an opinionated framework not an unopinionated framework so that's what i think okay. makes a lot of sense about it is because javascript and react historically have been very unopinionated which is why we've seen this yeah. like cambrian explosion of meta frameworks built around react whether you next or gatsby or blitz or redwood or remix there's so many of them and so this is one that is kind of the furthest in that like pendulum swing back to opinionation of saying like we want to make this okay. as opinionated as convention oriented as possible because this is like what we need to like tame the the beast that is react you know yeah for sure and uh, i i can see that being a good i mean because like when i was working at forum it's a rail shop mainly so you mm -hmm. know a lot of conventions you get stuff scaffolded and a lot of stuff for free it, it has it uses active record so you get kind of like orm like stuff too so and and everything every time i read about a framework coming out a lot of like even blitz i think tries to model themselves on a rails like experience because you know people just try to replicate that and so it's 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 uh, gonna be cool to it see did, although blitz 2.0 is a, is gonna be a completely different thing now so all the things you've heard okay. about blitz are you need to now unlearn all of them because blitz is a different <laughs> okay. thing now good to know good to know all right which awesome. is cool because okay. it's gonna be interesting but anyway so the first thing we're gonna do do you have yarn yeah i've got yarn let me just switch to coding view here and because it's the first time i've streamed with a guest in a while on my new mac with a widescreen everything's completely different we might get a little inception here for one split second but that's all good yeah there we go that's what i thought okay let's do this yeah there's the inception i was waiting for all right okay infinite scroll all right, so we got Redwood here, and all right, let's go to VS Code. All right, cool, cool. Uh, you see my screen okay? I zoomed in a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, I do have Yarn. I believe I have Yarn version, yeah, 1.22. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do Yarn space, create okay. space, and then redwood dash app okay yep then space and then the name what you want to name your project all right let's call it trees because it's redwood just you know and this is gonna take original. probably uh at least a minute because this is downloads a whole bunch of dependencies so while okay. that's going the what we're gonna do after this is we're then gonna start running some generate commands, which are gonna generate first our home page. And as we go on, like we're gonna be using the the CLI a lot. So CLI does like a ton of stuff for you because not only does it generate things like code in your project, it also can set up things. So we have seven deployment targets right now, and let's see if I can name them all. We got. Netlify, which of course we'll be doing today, Vercel, <laughs> Render, Layer Zero, Flight Control, Fly, and the Serverless okay. Framework. So okay. out of those seven, not all of them, but most of them, and hopefully one day all of them, you can run a command, basically yarn, redwood, setup, deploy, and then either Netlify or Vercel or serverless or render or whichever one you want to do. Okay. And then it actually configures your project so you can deploy it to that provider. So you gotcha. basically will write your code independent of where it's going to be deployed. And then it handles how to actually make it deployable to that thing. So if you want, you could deploy your thing in three different places. You can just create, take once your code is finished, you've developed it, you can then create three different branches, run the different set of command on each of them, point each of those at the provider, and then each of them will deploy. And it like does the entire thing for you. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And it's, it's, it's good you bring that up because the team I work on at Netlify is like, my job is to, you know, it's ecosystem team and, I'm specifically working with the framework, so like integrating the framework so they work seamlessly. So you might see a PR from me or 
by one of my coworkers. Well, this is what's so great is that Redwood was built for Netlify and then we made it agnostic to everything else. So the this is oh. kind of an important history history bit that we should talk about is that Tom Preston Warner was the original CEO of GitHub, the original creator of Jekyll, the static site generator, and okay. Tommel and Semver and all this stuff. And he is with Peter Pistorius, the creator of Redwood. And so before creating Redwood, he was also one of the first investors in Netlify. So him and Matt, they go way back. And he's been on this kind of like yeah. Jamstack journey since the beginning. And so Redwood yeah. was about this idea of making bringing full stack to the jam stack which now we've okay. redwood has entirely dropped the jam stack terminology they have scrubbed it from the site <laughs> because they felt that it confused people and people didn't really get what it meant for the full stack to go jam stack because they don't listen to my podcast obviously full stack jam stack okay. but so so tom is kind of like the person who's been on this whole journey kind of from the from the beginning okay. and once when they were building it, they basically built it so it would be deployable on Netlify very, very easily. So that's why all the conventions were kind of like fit to work with things like Netlify functions and Netlify's okay. kind of front end CDN. And so it's been kind of like a journey of expanding out from that to make it work on an actual server, to make it work in a Docker container or all this other okay. kind of stuff. Netlify is what it was originally built for, so it's like it still works very nicely on Netlify if that's what you do. So it's a it's right. it'll be a good kind of case study for you to look at, like how would a, how <laughs> how do framework authors who build a framework around your platform think about these kind of things? You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I know with like uh, Remix because I was working on integrating stuff with Edge functions with them. They they have deploy targets for the different deployment uh, platforms, like. For sale, Netlify, Cloudflare, etc. So, yeah, it, I think it makes sense to do kind of a similar thing in Redwood, where you, you can just you make it, you kind of bake it into when you get it set up the first time, because if you know you're deploying it to wherever, it'll just do that out of the box instead of like an extra step, like one of those like remove friction kind of things again. And it's not even friction. Sometimes that could be like the longest, most complicated part is figuring out how to actually get your thing online. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It works amazing on my local host. Cool, cool. All right, so, All right, so let's uh, uh, CD into the project, started. and yeah, yeah, so just CD into trees, and then kick off the dev server as with the little instruction it says there, yarn rw dev. Oh, is that is that a dot env in the project, or is this mine? This is not a normal thing that happens. This is your machine doing this, so yeah. you don't want to mess with it. Like it's it's set up specifically yeah, yeah. to. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Cool. All right. There's a .env file in there that got generated, I guess. Right? Yeah, and there's there's already a git and there's a git ignore that has the .env in it. So <clears throat> your whole like okay. environment variables, git ignore stuff. That's all. That's all handled for you. That's one of, part of the convention. So Sweet. don't gotta worry about any of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So all right. So we're in the root of the project. You should actually tree. open this like in because right now. Oh, yeah. You. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Cool. All right. There you go. I'm gonna close this a bit. It's kind of huge now. Okay, so all right, so we got a bunch of things in here. Do you wanna maybe before we start digging into things, do you wanna maybe briefly explain the folder? First off, there? yeah, and I would say don't install any any of these except for Prisma. <laughs> okay, whoops. Install do that. Cancel. Okay. Cancel. Prisma install. I installed something else, I think, but anyways. Too late, YOLO. All right. Yeah, I mean, none, none of them are, they're all, they're all pretty standard stuff. It's not going to wreck anything, but I, I don't really, I, I try and keep my thing as lean as possible and install as few of, of these as actually necessary. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. But anyway, okay, cool. so yeah, so the, the main thing is you have your web folder and your API folder. So let's just look at the web folder for now. Don't even look at the API folder. We'll get into that later. So this should be, yeah. uh, so actually start by going into the package.json. It's something I don't usually have people, people look at in, okay. in the web. So there's going to be, there's three package.json's. There's a root package.json, a web package.json, and an API package.json. So okay. this is the web one. And so okay. we see we have React, React DOM, and then some Redwood JS ones. We have Redwood JS web, Redwood JS router, and Redwood JS forms. So this should tip you off to the fact that Redwood has its own router built into it. 
So this okay. is something that would be closer to the equivalent of like a Next in the sense that it's like a very built out React front end with a lot of opinions and a router kind of built into it. And then also a whole form abstraction built into it. And that's using a React hook form. Okay, okay. Gotcha. And so the router that comes with this, it's, uh, is it file based or no? It's, it's just the, the hook doing other stuff or? So it's, it, it's, you can't really explain it in like a simple term because it's basically like it's built into the conventions of Redwood. So it like Redwood knows what a page is because you have a page folder and every file that's a page is something, something page. And then okay. Redwood will basically, it can take the pages and then can map them to an actual route with something they have called named route functions. So they kind of have their own router conventions that allows okay. it all to work. So as, as we actually, once we build a page, I can show you all the stuff and it'll make more sense than talking about kind of theoretically. So let's yeah. actually like generate, generate a page now and then take a look okay. at that. So right. go back to your terminal. Yeah. All right. Why? Well, yeah. And then we're getting, just let me change this. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. And then we're going to run yarn space RW yeah. space Redwood. and then yeah. just the letter G, which is short for generate. You could type all of generate app, let's just do G and then oh, space okay. yeah. and then the word page. Okay. So with all yeah, these generate commands, <laughs> it'll look something like this and you'll be generating something. And so we're going to be generating a page this time and then do okay. home. So we're, it's going to okay. be the name is going to be home and then space. And we want to go to just the, the forward slash route on our page. So just do forward slash. Is asking okay. like the home route on any kind of web page, and then that's the, the whole command. Okay, here we go. Whoops. No, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, I think Fig's thinking something. Okay. This is why Warp doesn't do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's look at this quickly. Okay, so you're using Storybook because there's a dot stories file, yep. so they're all co-located, which I, I like the co-location. I you know people have opinions on all these things and like folder mm -hmm. structure, but I think it makes sense if, for me at least to have the test close to where your thing is. So, so this mm -hmm. is nice. So you, you get a, you get a unit test or a component test file, you get storybook file, and then you get the actual homepage, which is a react component, I guess. Yep. And this goes back to the conventions because also like storybook is already installed and configured and will open on its own port and, and that whole deal. And so that's another like really nice thing for someone like me who is a beginner. Like I'd never set up storybook myself. So it wasn't until I used Redwood that I could just run a command and then storybook pops up. And I was like, oh, this is storybook. Is what people is yeah, yeah, no, I am a fan of storybook. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of platforms to do this, but it's, uh, I've been pretty happy with storybook and I know there are, I mean, we're not going to dive into storybook today because it's kind of a bit out of the, the whole thing. Going through today. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's good to note that it's included with it. Uh, I dropped a link to storybook for folks who might. Yeah, Michael Chan, he it. works from Chromatic Now, the company behind storybook, and he's been getting very into Redwood. He, he, we, Redwood gets storybook, I think, more than, than most frameworks. So pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. Awesome. Okay, okay let's cool. um, so start our development games. server now. So we're going to do okay. yarn RW DEV. And then okay. I think, so make sure there's a space between, yep. And then I okay. think this will open your browser automatically, which is something you can configure because that bothers a lot of people. But for now, let's just see what yeah. happens. All right, cool. So let's open it up. And all right, cool. So we got our homepage. So nice. Yeah. Now let me just. And you can make it. Yeah. Okay. It's massive, but yeah, cool. All right. Now let's close these. Yeah. Okay. So we scaffold this route. And it generated pages, including the homepage.js, which is our page component, I imagine. And yeah, and so we hit the slash, or if there's no slash, it just goes to the root. And we got our homepage. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. So, let's, awesome. so there's two things we should look at. We should look at this actual homepage file, and then also the routes.js file, because that'll explain how the router's working. Yeah, cool. Let me just hide this for a sec. All right. And let's go to homepage.js. Okay. So, all right. Oh, it installed the import cost. That's what you were saying to avoid. I know that can be a memory hog sometimes, but whatever. It's in there. <laughs> Hopefully my M1 doesn't explode. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So we got the page component here. 
I see some things already that look interesting to me. I mean, there's the, the link component, which generates the proper URLs for routes. And there's a meta tag. Is, is that using something like a helmet under the hood to inject that into the head of the document or? That's a good question. I know that we used to use React Helmet and then we created this, this meta tag. So I'm not sure exactly okay. whether we used Helmet or if we just kind of baked in our own kind of thing, but um, the important thing is that, oh wait, yeah, there we go. Redwood uses React Helmet async underneath. Okay. So yeah, so that's just uh, another kind of convention it gives you to where most people would be doing this themselves or like next they have they have a head component as okay. as well. And so this is for things like title, description, all your kind of like SEO type stuff. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Awesome. All right. And those are all being pulled in. Now, I did have a question. So we generated this with JavaScript. Is there like a lot of frameworks nowadays, they support TypeScript out of the box as an option. Is that something available in Redwood or is that something you bolt on after? Or Yes, <clears throat> TypeScript is is hard fought and one. We do have TypeScript support. It took us an extremely okay. long time because Redwood was not built with TypeScript in mind. And we actually I talked to Orta. Orta actually is on the, the Redwood team now, the who's a you know TypeScript oh, no kind way. of kind of kind of legend. And he was saying that he's never seen anything like it before where it's like building a TypeScript layer on top of like a dynamic JavaScript code base. He's saying it's like okay. one of the most like <laughs> just he says to him, he says it actually like shows the potential of like what TypeScript could be because it could can be molded to something like yeah. this. That was like really not meant to be TypeScript in the first place, but it, it took like over a year of like multiple people writing types for a very, very long time to get there. So I don't ever use TypeScript. So I okay. we won't do that today, but if you want to use TypeScript, and I know many people running Redwood in production are running it in TypeScript, so yeah, that is that is a thing you can do. Cool, cool, awesome. Yeah, just wanted to ask is all. Okay, totally. uh, yeah, okay. So we got the page here. So like, obviously, I imagine if I change this to trees, there's and I come back here, I should see that the title says trees now, which it does. So so, and this is run. Is this running React eighteen or seventeen? We are on 17 right now. I believe we probably okay. could upgrade to 18. The only thing we would have to figure out is there's that change in the 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 actual React DOM root. But we wouldn't if we did that, we would be using 18, but we wouldn't actually be taking advantage of anything that is in 18 like like suspense or concurrent mode or anything that, like like that. So that is something okay. that we're going to be thinking about more now that we're kind of past V1. That's like on a long, there's like a long list of things we want to work on right now. Like SSR is like probably going to be <laughs> higher up on the list, but we'll get to yeah. it eventually. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, we can talk about SSR a little later, but why don't mm -hmm. we continue on here? So, okay, yeah. so what, what would you like me to do next now? So let's just delete delete the links and routes part. So delete the very first import. Okay. Yep. 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 And then delete that whole kind of bottom P tag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then just cool. kind of rename this, make it, make it your own, give it your own kind of title or whatever. Okay. Let's say Friday. All right. Cool. Just random words popping out of my head right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we, all right. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, we... let's add a woot. Uh, whoot, whoot, there yeah. it is. All right, cool. Great. Right. Right. And now right. let's. Yeah. Uh, what are you saying? Oh no, no, I was just scratching my yeah. eye. <laughs> awkward. Well, yeah, I was gonna say um, let's now generate an about page, and then we'll go look at the routes file because we can look at kind of both pages and and see them together. So you're gonna run almost the exact same command you just did, and uh, yep. So yarn redwood, yep page, and then make that say about. And then you're not going to say anything after that because you're going to have the name and the actual route are going to be the same thing. They're both going to be about. Okay, so it's inferred again because of the conventions, I guess. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, we'll let that build out. Okay, and it's nice. I see it's refreshed. I remember, I think they might have fixed this a while ago. Is this, uh, is this using Vite under the hood or is it using Webpack? Oh man, I wish. No, we're still on Webpack. V okay. is, you know, another on that long list of things we want to look at after V1, but um, it's not going to be super straightforward because, like, Redwood was built 
pre Vite and is not really like super set up well for e- ESM and a lot of stuff. So we'll see. But right yeah. now we're still on yeah. the web pack. So if you oh, just yeah. go now I... to go, go back to your browser and go to forward slash about and you can see the about page. Okay, so let's go slash or is it saying Canada a boot? All right. A boot. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. All right. So yeah. Uh, I, I like how this is really quick too, like the the generators. Uh, that's a nice touch. That's something I think that's that's some of the stuff you're starting to see that comes from Rails inspiration. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. So we got. So now go to now. your go to your routes JS file. So this is in the root of your web folder. Yeah. Yep. And then those delete all the comments real quick. Let me kind of see this a little more cleanly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so oh, that's nice. It, it added the route in here too. That's nice. So you can see here we have the two routes that we have created, and then it starts off with a not found page. So if you go anywhere that's like not a route, it'll kick you to like a, a 404 kind of message. And then there's okay. for each of these, there's three things there's the path, which is the actual like URL, then there's the page, which is the page component that we were looking at, and then the name. And so the name then is what you use for the name route function when you actually want to link to it, like within your within oh, your components. Okay. okay, that's that's the unique identifier. Okay, <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah, no, that's neat. I, I like, like how when we scaffold it, it automatically updated the routes too. Because mm-hmm. like I know in the past on other things, it's like, you know, you kind of end up doing things piecemeal. Okay, I made my page. Now I need to add the route and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. So it's nice it's doing yeah. all this out of the box for you. Yeah. And then there's also other things you can add, like you can add like pre-render if you want like pre-render a page and, and stuff like that. So, and then also like okay. we'll have uh, like pri- you have private routes. So once you get into like authentication, the auth is built into the router in a way that allows like the whole auth oh. flow to work really, really nicely. So we probably won't do auth today, but uh, that's a it's a thing that is incredibly consequential and complicated in modern apps that Redwood like really nails. So it's uh, worth that's mentioning. Cool, cool. All right, so we got a couple pages. What should we move on to next? Okay, in the tr- in the tutorial here, you would then go to layouts, which we'll we'll skip because all layouts really are is it's just like you have like if you want to have a nav bar that would be around both of our okay. pages, so you can navigate between them. You use the layout, but that's not really super important. We should go into the the back end right now. So yeah. let's check out the the API folder and go to okay. DB. Yep, and ah, schema.prisma. Schema. Okay. Yeah, so this is our Prisma schema. And this is, you can go ahead and delete the, the comments in, okay, yeah. in there. Cool. All right. So we so this is a, a GraphQL schema, right? No, so this is the Prisma part. So this is why I say Prisma and, and GraphQL oh, okay. are kind of decoupled now. So this is so this is why if you see it says dot Prisma, not dot GraphQL. And actually, we don't oh, have yeah, any dot so. GraphQL files. We have dot JS files that have GraphQL schemas inside them. But we'll see that in a second. Okay. the The main thing cool. here, though, is this is for our database specifically. So we're going to define our database provider. So okay. let's change that to PostgreSQL instead of uh, SQLite. So the very top one. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you, GitHub cool. Copilot. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then let's change the where it says user example. Change that to say post with a capital P. Yep. And then you can leave the ID exactly how it is, and yep. then change email to say title, and then get rid of the unique constraint. Okay. And then change name to say body, yep. and then get rid of that question mark. And then okay. add another line and write created at camel case. Okay. Yeah. And then just do what Copilot's telling you to do. Yeah, there you go. So what that's doing is it will, <laughs> you, when, we, when we create the post, it will automatically generate a timestamp for us. That's from like now, like right now, this is the time. And then it'll yeah. stamp that on the, on the post. OK, cool. So. Now we need a database though. So do you have a railway account by chance? I do not, but I can create one. Uh... Yeah, it shouldn't take very long. And uh, actually we don't even need, you don't even need a railway account actually. This is great. Okay, so just go to um, dev.new. Okay. This, this is gonna be great. So I love railway. It's an amazing way to spin up a database. 
and it's so amazing. It actually lets you spin up a project without an account, and then it's just kind of like a free floating oh, project right. for a week that you can redeem or like you know claim when you create an account. Otherwise, it'll get wiped after seven days. But for like a demo like this, this is exactly what we what we want. So yeah, so this you're gonna click great, provision. Great idea. Yeah, I know, right? Provision uh, PostgreSQL. Okay. This is this is something I've never seen anywhere. Dude, like, Railway. Just... It's it's where it's at. I'm telling you, it's gonna change yeah. your life. <laughs> yeah. No, I've I've heard of Railway. I've never never used it. I've just heard good things mm -hmm. about it. But what I mean is the flow of just like create the database without even having an account or anything. That's like And I don't know anywhere cool. else that you could do this. I mean it's it's pretty yeah. unheard of. Yeah. So it's just it's just running a container for you, so it's not like they're spinning up like amazon rds for you like that would be like those things like 40 dollars a month you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly okay cool so we spun up an instance i'm guessing yep and so you should increase your font size a little bit oh yeah sorry yeah, that's good all right and then click click postgres right in the middle and that'll take you into your actual database and then go to connect yeah and so if we see here, you can connect with PSQL. That's the top one, but we're not going to do that because we want to get the the environment variable and we want to put that in our .env. So you can do this off screen if you want, or you can do it on screen. You just tear the database down afterwards. It's kind of up to you. Yeah, no, I'll I'll do it off off screen just to, just to. I don't know. I was doing Andrew Brown, who does a lot of cloud stuff. He does a lot of mm -hmm. courses. For, he had him on the dev stream like i think i think it was just before christmas or maybe right after and he he was showing me how to use uh terraform and i'd set up all the keys and stuff and it, i did it off screen and stuff but then i was going back in my history and it exposed the keys and i did it like three times during the stream and really hard just, I've, it, I've exposed keys so many times on streams it's yeah. really hard <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the end of the world because you could just kill them right away and chances are people watching aren't going to be able to type it out that quickly anyways, but it was just... Yeah, someone could screenshot it out really quickly and then they have it. Yeah, That's the move <laughs> you really, if you want to be bit. that guy. All right, cool. I'm going to just do this off screen here. So this is going to be for my, obviously, my environment file in the trees folder. So. Yep, and then it's going to be, you're going to have a, not an environment variable that's database underscore URL, all caps. And that is, okay. you oh, even yeah. see that in your in your Prisma schema. That's, you can see kind of where that gets injected. Yeah, okay, cool. I see there. All right. Okay, let me just copy it. All right. There's a, I showed Lucia this. You might be aware of it too, but VS Code has a, a really nifty extension for like if you open your environment variables by accident on screen it's called cloak and it uh, i i had that for a while but then when i wasn't streaming it would still be on i wouldn't be able to see my environment variables and it made it really obnoxious working with my environment variables that i have to copy and paste them into like a text edit okay. file so i could actually see them and it just yeah i don't know all right so i i put it in the root.env file i'm assuming that's the right spot yep. That's the one. Yep. Okay. Yep. There you go. Uh, okay. Cool. It's in there. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Let's uh, continue on here then. All right. So mm -hmm. we've made some modifications there. We've got our database connection string, and I imagine we need to create some tables maybe now. So now we're going to do the Prisma migrate, and this is what's going to set up our database for us. So, so I was talking about how you have the migrations with your ORM. And this is the type of thing okay. that you get with Active Record or with uh, Django's ORM. And so there's like there's the actual like object to like the JavaScript to SQL translation, and then there's like the database migrations. They're kind of like two separate components. So when people talk about Prisma, there's like Prisma client, there's Prisma migrate. And those are two completely separate pieces of software. So that's like kind of one important thing to okay. to know. So right now we're gonna do um another command in the terminal. Yeah. Okay. Let's open that back up. All right. So yep. and this will be yarn rw and then prisma not generate. Okay. Yeah. So what this means is we are just doing a prisma command. So if you were using prisma with remix, everything after yeah. the redwood would be the type of command you would be running. It'd be completely identical. And then you're gonna okay. do migrate. Okay. Yep. And then dev. And then you could run that, but what I like to do is then I add an additional flag for dash dash name. 
Okay. Because it's going to ask you to name your, your migration anyway. So. And are these, like I know in Rails land, they're typically, they usually say something like migration and then a timestamp in the file. Is that what uh, Redwood does or something similar? It'll, it'll do that for us, yeah, so you'll see that. And so is it saying just dash N? I don't know. That. Yeah, yeah, it's dash N or dash dash name. I guess it's just giving okay, me cool, the shorthand. Great. Good to know. Okay, so and then enter. do space and just and then name. So just say posts, all lowercase. Yeah, cool. And then, and then run that. Yep. Cool. All right. Hopefully my database string is all good can't reach database server okay so that's a connection string thing but let's just double check i mean i did copy this should be good right yeah back. doesn't i looked in the sample file and they don't seem to be in quotes which i imagine is yeah that oh, shouldn't be I, no no it's all good i know what i did wrong yeah, I, I exposed I exposed my database. I I updated the uh, the comment that said test database. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Anyway, gotcha. yeah. Good. When you were looking at it, I was like, I think that's not. I don't think that's right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, uh, for those watching later, I will tear down that database. All right, let's run this again. Should be good now. Yeah, I was okay. like, oh, maybe really changed something. That's never happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The beauty of live coding. Cool, cool. So I guess this takes just a little bit of time. So yep. And if you kind of see there, the... it says like containers dash US dash West. So this is basically just like spinning up a database for you on Google Cloud and then kind of like exposing it for you. And there's like right now it's like totally open. There's like no permissions, there's no passwords, there's nothing on at all, which is like kind of bad if you don't know that but it's also really awesome because yeah. you almost like if you do some like planet scale like they they give you a database that's like locked down which is like really is a good thing but at the same time for a demo yeah. like this it's like yeah go through and then like turn three things off to, to get it to work yeah yeah no i i really do like this that feature uh, a railway obviously it's not something you keep permanently unless you convert it like you said but mm -hmm. it's it's such a great way to remove friction from doing it like a demo yeah, or right. if you have like a colleague who needs to debug something and they need to debug something that has to do with the database, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I ran the DB, uh, the Prisma command. It created a SQL migration. So looks like here, I opened up the migration file. So it looks like for Redwood, it generates a folder time stamped with the name of the entity, like post or the table name, sorry. And Basically, everything that's in here is what we saw in here. Yeah, it takes your Prism model and then it generates the SQL and then it took that SQL and it applied it to the database. So right now our railway database has a post table right now with four columns. Okay, so if I came back to here. Go to yeah, exactly. Where did my, there we go. Okay, yep. cool. And then, and then we yep. got a post. Nice. Yep. And cool. So there's the columns and there's nothing in there. So we nice. could add stuff through the railway UI, but we'll do it all just the, the kind of redwood way. So now we're going to run a scaffold command. This is like, this is the, the magic command. So it like, you know, writes like a whole okay. project's worth of code for you. So yarn redwood G scaffold. Yeah. Yep. And then post all one word or all lowercase singular. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. And again, this is uh, conventions kicking in. All right, so as it's and so we don't need to look at any of this code necessarily. Let's just first go back to our our project and go to the posts route. So like okay. in our in our browser. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. We have a bit there, and you said just slash post, right? Or uh, posts. posts. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Nice. Okay. Oh, so this is because of our environment variable. We have to restart our server. Okay. So let me do that. Yeah. Do, do. Okay. Just give it a second. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, Vite would come in handy. It just takes. It takes a second. Yeah. No, this is par for yeah, yeah, course. No, all good. Yeah. Red. Redwood's right. a little. It's a little. No, it's all good. It's. Yeah. Re replacing the build system, I I can definitely sympathize with that. That it will take a bit of <laughs> time. All right, so let's go to posts. Okay, no posts yet. Great, okay. so go ahead and create a post. Okay, and th just to be clear, this is all Redwood stuff here, right? This isn't like railway pages or anything, right? 
Yep. So right now this is completely agnostic to your database. This is like a red, this, this is using the Redwood form library and React hook form. And I think Tailwind is okay. the styling or maybe not, but it's, okay. this is kind of just like what you get out of the box from, from Redwood and the back end is whatever database string you just plug in and you could use something like okay. MongoDB, which is pretty amazing. All right, cool. All right. So I'm just creating a new post. Uh, a little yellow. yellow. Okay, so all right. there you go. All right, so we so I guess out of the box we just kind of have like an adv admin view like table of all the yep. records. Okay, that's right. Yeah, cool. All and right. then you can't so you can't really see right now because you're super zoomed in. But if you scroll over, like in the table, like yeah. inside the table, I'll, kind of I'll scroll to the right. Myself. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so go to like yes, you can do show. And then that takes us to our actual post. You see up top in your URL, we're at forward slash one, the ID. And so that's okay. kind of how the routing the routing works on that. And then you can edit it or delete it and do whatever you want. The whole CRUD capabilities are all there. Yeah, yeah, no, gotcha. Okay, yeah, no, and that's, that's like Rails again. Cool, cool. All right, and that's where all the conventions come in. Okay, so we've created a new post. What should we get up to next? So now the final thing we want to do to actually like get this on our home page is we're going to create a cell. And so a okay. cell is how we do the data fetching in Redwood. And these are pretty okay, cool. I imagine. So we're going to run another generate command and say generate cell. Okay. Yep. And then do um, blog posts with capital B for blog and capital P for posts. Yep. Just okay. like that. And then enter. Yep. And then that will create our blog posts cell. Okay. And while that's generating, well, it was pretty quick, but what is a cell exactly? Yeah. So if you go look at it, it'll be very, very easy okay. to explain. And okay, so it's post, so uh, posts uh, or blog posts cell mix. This oh, is, yeah. this is the one that was generated from um, our thing. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And zoom out just one little clip so we can see the whole thing at one time. Yeah, yeah so we have a couple so we have kind of like so first there's two big chunks here there's the query at the very top and then all the rest of the stuff so the query is the graphql query that is what is yeah. basically right now going to query for the blog posts and you see right now it gives us an error because we need to change it to match our schema so we need to change the three places it says blog posts change just to say posts okay. all under all lowercase yeah okay so I normally use the, I have a keyboard shortcut for it, but there's an app I installed that's overridden my VS code, the command shift L. So it's, nice. and I've, I forgot what I switched it to. <laughs> Anyways, so we got nice. posts, posts. Okay. It's still giving us an error. I don't think it should though. So let's, um, let's just leave that, leave that alone for now. Okay. to finish what i was explaining then there's there's the query at the top that is the four states that your thing can be in so if you've ever like worked with data fetching before you know that you usually have to say if it's a success do this if it's an error do this if it's empty do this or if it's still loading do this and so this does yeah. all that for you so okay. you can right now it'll just show loading it'll just say the word loading but you can put like animation in there and then it just says empty for empty and then failure, it'll bring the error message out for you. And then success, okay. it will return the, the posts and like map over them for you. Okay, gotcha. And obviously this is scaffolding again. So like you said, you, you know, like you'll get these generic looking states, but you can create, a, you know, design a nice empty state and so on. It's just, but, but just, you get a lot out of the box to just get working right away. Totally, yeah. So let's save all that and then now go back to your home page file. Yeah. And we're going to import the blog post cell at the top. Okay. Is it a default export? I didn't check. So nope, it'll be so this is more Redwood magic, so don't do any curlies or anything. So so go back. Okay. And it'll be just import blog post cell just like the as is. Oh no way. Just like that? So yeah, if I knew how to type properly, but so posts, uh, plural okay. posts. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just like that, and then from. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then fill fill that in what it's got for you. Yep. Okay. Cool. So we're not. Okay. Using and then drop that under under the woot. All right. 
Okay. Yeah, that should be it. Okay. And so, so now, go back to your so home page. All right. So let's go to there. Da, da. All right, cool. Okay, and so, so that's good. Right now, it's just giving us the ID. And the reason for that is if we go back to our post cell and we look at our query, our query is only returning the ID. Yep. Oh, so okay. The very yeah, top. Yeah, so it. fill in the other, the name or uh, be a title and then no, uh, no commas or anything. Oh, okay. Sorry. Habit. Do, do. And then create it at would be the fourth one. Oh, yeah. Good call. Create. All right. Yep. Let me just save that. Okay. And then if I come back to the page, I imagine. Okay, cool. So yep. I guess this is just JSON stringified right now. Yep. Yeah. So the next thing okay. would be you can take the, it's, so it's mapping over it. You can actually create like a, a component if you wanted to, but um, we should probably move on to the, to the deployment part now since we have yeah, sure. Time yeah, crunch. Time is it? Time yeah, we got, we right. got plenty of time. It takes like five to 10 minutes to actually build the site. So the sooner we can get building, the better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So now we will do that setup command I was talking about a while ago. So yarn rw setup deploy. Yeah. And do I need to stop the dev server, I imagine? Yeah, you can stop that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done yeah. with that. The, the site cool. is pretty much done. Right. And then setup. deploy. Okay. Yep. And then Netlify. Cool, cool. Yep. And just enter. I'm logged in, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, that that won't be that won't really matter right now. The we're going to okay. get into a Git repo and then connect that Git repo to Netlify. Okay, okay. So let's right. look at just one thing. Let's look at the Netlify.toml that it created for us. It seems to be empty. You just had two T's in Netlify. Uh, yeah. I've got some fat fingers going on today here. All right. All right, cool. So right, there's so... the build commands, which is then doing another Redwood command, which is yarn Redwood deploy Netlify. So the setup deploy sets your project up. And then the the deploy step is what the provider uses to then build your, your things. It needs to build both the website, the, the front end, and put that in the dist folder. And then it also has to build your functions into a Lambda function. So that's the functions, API dist functions. And then that then gets exposed as the, the dot forward slash Netlify forward slash functions forward slash index thing. Okay, I don't know how, how much you mess around with Netlify functions. That's like the, the Netlify functions naming convention. Yeah, yeah. No, cool. it's, uh, yeah, we've been working on stuff with functions lately. Before we deploy this, I'm going to go back into my terminal on the side. I'm going to, I'm going to add the environment variable to my Netlify just mm -hmm. so that we don't end up with an error over there. So just give me a second there. Yeah, that I usually do that through the dashboard, but it should in theory also work through the CLI. Yeah, no, I've been doing a lot of stuff through this CLI. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Let's do set, and I'm just gonna get the value here. Just one sec. Okay. Good thing I went to the chiropractor the other day because my nuts all turned to the left here. All right. It's a <laughs> database underscore URL. Okay. Cool. All right. And set database underscore URL. Okay. Yeah. We got to do the site first because it's not linked to anything. So okay. I have it set up to do it though. Okay, so let's continue over in here. And okay, so we it generated the Netlify Toml now. Should we go ahead and try to deploy it? So yeah, I would say the, the way I would usually do it is I create a Git repo and then link that. But I think in yeah, the account, do that. I mean, you. I would say actually, let's let's try just doing it from the Netlify. So I'll be kind of curious to see how this how this goes. I think Jason did yeah. this when I was on there with Jason. I was going to say, okay. And it's going to ask me to create the site. Create, configure new site. Yes. All right. And now you should just name it the same thing I named it when I created it. What did you call it? Well, it'll, it'll automatically, I'll give it a unique name because it, it keeps giving me uh, URLs that aren't, they're just with my name in it. I'll put something different, Redwood Trees. I don't know. Okay. All right. So that's building. I'm just going to add the environment variable. Okay. That's set. 
All right, so it's, uh, we'll just uh, open this up a bit bigger. So it's deploying now. It's running the build command. We've got our environment variable for the database underscore URL set. So we should be in a good state. Okay, that's just Webpack. Okay, one make okay one migration so is, this, is this run this this is this basically running the build that would be run on netlify but it's doing it on your computer instead yeah exactly and then it'll it'll upload it so now it's finished and it's just uploading it all and then once this is done it should give you a url that you can navigate to which i'll click on in a second this is cool because like I've worked with Layer Zero a little bit, getting theirs set up, and you do this with with their CLI because they don't have the ability to actually build it on their own platform. So it's okay. interesting that you guys both kind of went at it from opposite directions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it says Friday. Let's just. I think the it could be because there we go. That's good. It's having the environment a... variable. Yeah, I'm just gonna double check it. But that mm -hmm. that's definitely environment variable related. Yep. So I'm just gonna. Yeah, that also shows why the having the error message with the cell is is very nice. It doesn't tank your whole website. You have it contained to that one place. So Redwood apps like they actually like are very resilient to bugs. I've found because is if you follow the conventions like we just did, like your your pages and like your router, like all that tends to just like always work. <laughs> and so if you yeah, go yeah. off of the path and start like writing your own stuff and then you're you know uh, you're on your own but uh, the conventions they they take good care of you I, I have found in my experience yeah it's it seems to be correct i i wonder if it's i would just go into I your dashboard and, and take a look you wonder if it's because because i set the environment variable mid build because i the site hadn't been created yet so i think it might be really yeah you yeah that i wouldn't expect that to work i'm just going off uh, off screen because because when you do it through the ui you include the the environment variable and then you you click deploy and then it starts doing the deploy once it's already loaded in there is a way to do that though I, I, to like set the environment variable with the cli before you actually deploy it yeah no i did it it's just the because it was the first time i created it locally it, you generate like it creates that hidden dot netlify folder and that's mm. i i needed that to create the environment variables but i i kind of let when i started deploying it it created that and then i set the environment error, so i'm just going to rerun yeah. the deploy yeah, yeah i should uh, do it then okay where's my rerun options open published where's my deploy why is it not letting me redeploy what am i doing wrong uh, okay i'm just going to do it from the cli again because i don't know why i can't see it anyways it, it won't take that long but yeah so okay so that's kind of cool. So that whole process, if I just zoom this in. So if we come back to what was going on here, this is going to do the same thing again. So I'll just hide it for now. So it's kind of nice that the this whole deploy handles everything. So like the, the back end, the front end and all that stuff, the functions that make sense because we're hosting those. Is there anything else out here? I'm just looking to redirect. So is this this is just a catch-all just to say that things are all good so that's because you have to because redwood is it's like a single page application on the front end right so you always want to hit the index.html and then the router takes over from there yeah yeah gotcha okay yeah. this should be live now yeah that was something that confused me for a very long time okay i'm not sure so what i would recommend like... doing is I would recommend going into your Netlify dashboard and then just like looking yeah. at the environment variables in there and making sure that's all good. Yeah, yeah. And sure. then otherwise, sure. there's other things we can do to kind of because right now what since it's running in production, it masks the the actual error. So there is a we're, there's a more descriptive error that we would be getting, but they're they're not showing it because this is a, a security yeah. best practice. You actually don't want to just expose your error messages because then people will will hit it in a bunch of ways and chip by your reading your error messages and reverse engineer your application and then hack it and it's a whole thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right i copy paste it it's database underscore url and i put in the okay that should be good i do have to it's yeah it won't pick it up though I'll have to... so i would recommend going um doing clear clear the cache when you do a rebuild 
because that will yeah. basically wipe the whole thing and then do a rebuild. Um, that's usually what you have to do when you get into weird states with Nellify. You published, yes, deploy. What? <laughs> I'm just wondering why, like, normally I can see, like, a redeploy button, but, like, what? I, I don't know. Open, publish, deploy, lock. Why can't I stop auto-publishing? No. This is so weird. Normally, <laughs> normally there's a button that just says, like, I can rerun it. I don't know what's going on. Deploys, production, production. Okay, now that's the actual site. At the, I'll blame it on being the new guy but at work, but this is weird. I don't have, I don't know what's up with it. I can't see the deploy buttons. Like, the, you know, you know, there's usually that retry deploy, retry deploy and clear cache. It's not showing up for some reason. So let me, let me get into my account real quick. So what you'll want there is it's... when you're on your site, there'll be the deploys tab, the second tab. And then once you're there, you'll have a one that'll say trigger deploy. That then if you click on that, I'll have to deploy site and clear cache and deploy site. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm there. It's it's not showing up for some reason. Why? Really? That's super weird. I don't know. Um, it's, it's really weird. Because I do this all the time, so that's why I'm wondering why it's totally. like mm -hmm. site overview. Anyways. Do go go to deploys. Can you put that back on screen then scroll up and go to deploy? So click the published where it says published. Yeah. Um, no, that, no, you click here. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. See, normally, normally it says retry. I don't know why <laughs> I can't. Oh, you know what? Maybe because it's not, I mean, it shouldn't matter, but it's, it's cause I haven't linked it to a Git repo yet. I just did it through the CLI, but that shouldn't matter. I'm not going to waste too maybe, much time. Yeah, because like, RMA, cause that's, they, they can't just, like reach back into your computer to rebuild it. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, but it's weird. It, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. Okay, I'm just mm -hmm. going to do it one more time from here, but I'll, I'll I'll publish the project after. Anyways, we know it works because uh, it's definitely environment variable related or something because the we saw locally that it's loading the data. Okay, cool. I'm just doing a time check here. We got about 15 minutes yet left. So we've got, we've gone through how to scaffold things. We talked about cells and, and cells seem to be like an easy way to just manage and display the information in the entities in your, your data store. That's what it pretty much seems to be. I mean, it, well, it's a way to display it is also like when you're doing the actual CRUD, that's also a cell as well. So the, the mutations oh, okay. are also kind of baked, baked into everything as well. So it gives you a fully integrated thing with because this is what makes graphql so interesting is that like it's all you need for like everything you want to do to connect your front end to your back end but that involves knowing a whole lot of graphql you like write graphql queries and understand there's between a query and a mutation how you deal with query variables and then how that manages connect to your database and display on your front end and so there's like all that kind of stuff and so redwood basically gets you set up so you can use graphql and have everything that you would want to set up yourself, but then you don't have to actually set it up yourself. Yeah. I'm going to push it with Git because I'm still getting the mm -hmm. same error. Cool. And then do, 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 we'll do put repo create. Bop, bop. Yes. Push an existing. Yes. There. Trees. There. Public. Add a remote. Yes. Okay. Origin. Yes. All right. So that's all pushed up to Git. So now if I do uh, NTL link, it should, oh yeah, let's do, I'm going to unlink it first and then it's going to ask me to link it to the repo, I believe. Oh no, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to do the deploy one more time actually. And then that'll, I believe it will add it through Git at this point. Create and configure a new site. Yes. Trees to sure. Okay. Trees to maybe. Uh, anyways, the repo will be up. I'll figure out what's going on with, uh, with the deploy. Cause it's, it's gotta be something with the environment variable, but I'm not sure what, maybe it's just like, or we broke something in the, in the latest version that just went out. We didn't, no one's caught it yet except us. That is, there's a okay. tiny, tiny possibility. So, that's surprise. what's happening. I would say it's probably not, but it's not impossible. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can check it out after, but uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I won't want to 
waste too much time on that right now because like uh, we've got like yeah 10 minutes left so um, this is a good this is a good okay. illustration of why it's good to just follow the the path they give you which is like connect the repo and, and do that whole thing because like that is the workflow that like has been battle tested like hundreds and hundreds of times you know yeah yeah no i can do that from there if not uh, we can we can try that uh, i'll let that finish uploading i'll i'll check the link once it goes live if that doesn't work i'll do it through the github repo and Dude, see, I can. I'm gonna try forking this to see what happens. Mother forker. All right. Okay, that didn't work. But okay, so let's just come here. Do, do, do. Check out that new website. All right. Okay, add a new site. Uh, important existing project from GitHub. Yes, thank you. And trees. Is it in there? Let me see what I just called it. Do, do. Building my own version. Let's see what happens. Yeah, what did I just call it? I probably could have just copied the origin. Okay, yeah, trees. All right. Yeah, it is just trees. Why didn't it find? Okay, it's already there. All right, cool. Main. Okay, so it's pulling in all the stuff that it needs to. Let's do deploy site. Start not. All right. I'll zoom this in a bit. Oh, we know the deploy was all good. It's just. Uh... And I've double checked the environment variable, so I'm not sure what it is, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens once this is done. And yeah, if the one I build nice. also breaks, then I'll be opening a issue on the Redwood repo. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, but aside from this part here, you know, it's a it's live coding, so something always goes wrong. But I what mean, was your impression cool. of the the framework? Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was just really quick i mean like we talked through each of the steps but like once you're familiar with like the the cli for redwood that seems pretty quick you know like yarn rwg scaffold this scaffold that create the creating the schema seems pretty straightforward you know like anything back end i mean we went with the the railway you know auto available database which i thought was super cool but like I mean, if, if anything slows you down, I feel like it's probably more once you just create a real database that you're going to use, maybe that's the slowest part because you can't really automate that to some degree. But everything else, yeah. it was like super <laughs> fast. And I liked how out of the box you had like CRUD support where you could add, edit, delete, you know, and you can get something up super fast. And, you know, obviously from there, you're like, okay, well, this site looks pretty generic. You know, that's when you start pulling in your design team or, or yourself, you know, adding, you know, making it look better, but you know, out of the box. Yeah. It just worked really fast. Okay. What's it complaining about in the deploy? Du, du. Oh, parsing the schema. There's an error. Interesting. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Error value. The Earl must start with Postgres. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was in there. So the is still happening with your environment variable. Yeah. That's weird though, because I copied literally what was in the, the railway app there. But I'll go back and just see. It's I'm looking at it right now, like it's off screen, but it's it's prefixed with PostgreSQL colon slash slash. So yeah, that's sure correct. Up. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to the Netlify UI again, and I'm just gonna double check the environment variable, but. Yeah, some because I I just deployed it and it worked for me and I spun up a new railway database. Okay, cool. Yeah, you mind sharing it in the the chat there? There's, there's clearly something I botched on my end. I'm just kind of confused as to what it is at the moment. But oh wait, I think I know it. Yeah, I think there's an issue. Yeah, well, no, I think what happened because I'm logged in. Oh no, I'm logged in over there. That's why. No, it's because I'm logged into my personal Netlify and then there's my work Netlify and like, but that's that's in a different browser, so it's not that. But let me just double check the environment variable again. Da -da. Environment edit variables. No, I know what it is, because <laughs> we I created it from the the repo. I didn't set the variable. <laughs> it <laughs> was in the other one. So Funny. there we go. Okay. So let me yeah, you'll start to rebuild it again. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back Honest. there. <laughs> I, lo I love what it's called. The, the website's internal name is called preeminent cannoli. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's here bring that here. All right. So let's reload the preeminent look. Okay. All right. So we should be good. Let's just starting up. 
And then I also dropped in the chat the the site that I got up. Oh, I just pulled that up okay, also. Cool. Yeah, let me check that out. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, I see it working there. Yeah, so it could be that there's just an issue when you deploy it directly from the CLI that something doesn't get picked up. Maybe I'm not sure what, but uh, but let's let's let this finish here, and then we can probably wrap it up from there, and we'll we'll have some parting thoughts as they say in cheesy land but yeah no it's cool i opened up yours there everything's working really well so mm -hmm. the, the blog post i wrote yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Pre pretty awesome post there <laughs> so let's let this finish here and then we should be good and i am excited to see my preeminent cannoli all right i always, I always get a chuckle out of all the the names that get auto-generated I don't think any of them are offensive ever. I, I think there's something. Well, you're, you're lucky then. We got very unlucky with our steps and auto generators a couple times or things. There's one I was going to do a stream with Alex Trost, and it, it okay. had a, a, a term, and it's like a term for an animal, but also a term for another thing. <laughs> and so he got, he's like, okay. can I get a different account? <laughs> and we're like, yes, definitely. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oof. It's also like, Okay, well, this is finishing up. Yeah, because we have I have live captioning running. It's it's using webcaptioner.com and it's perfect, obviously. And it's just funny because my my name rhymes with lots of things, and so sometimes it doesn't pick up my name properly, and I'll just leave it at that. But anyways, it's it's sometimes just look because like I'll have the I'll check on the closed captioning while I'm streaming sometimes just to make sure it's working. And yeah, sometimes you read it and you're like, oof, it's not. That's not what they said. All right, uh, this is almost done, I think. Yeah, we're at the end pretty much. Okay, yeah, site is live. Mm -hmm. Let's see this cannoli. Nice. Yeah, okay. all right, we got it. Okay. I got it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it definitely works when you connect a GitHub repo from the UI. I'm not sure what happened when we did the deploy through the CLI. Like if it, if it was if it was already linked through the CLI, sorry, if it was already linked to like that site was linked to a GitHub repo, doing it from the CLI, imagine would work. Maybe there's an issue when it's not linked to anything and we're just deploying it, but I don't know what mm -hmm. what that issue is. But uh, and that that makes sense to me because I wouldn't imagine anyone really doing that, like not using a Git repo, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, no, just sometimes, yeah, I usually push a repo like when i'm live coding and stuff like i'll, I'll add yeah. comments and stuff so mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. hey, if you want now you got something to bring to the the templates team or the the integration team whatever where you're like hey i know it yeah, yeah. was integration nicer now <laughs> yeah yeah no i was i'm working on a bug in the cli right now so maybe uh, i'll take a peek at it but uh, cool cool well listen man uh, i know we're pretty much yeah it's 429 we're pretty much at time I dropped some links for yourself and Redwood on Twitter as well as the Twitter website. This is a lot of fun. Thanks for coming on as my first guest in a little bit here. So I'll be streaming it more frequently now that I've kind of settled into work here. But uh, this was really cool. I enjoyed the demo. I know we didn't get into everything. Like I know we were going to maybe talk about SSR and stuff, but maybe we can talk about that. Well, I mean, there is no there is no SSR. That's the the short and long of it. <laughs> so Come back later yeah, for yeah. SSR. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice. All right. Uh, awesome. All right. Well, listen, thanks, Anthony. Uh, folks, if you aren't already giving Anthony a follow on Twitter or Redwood, give them a follow. And I'm off next week because it's Canadian long weekend, but I'll be back after that. And streaming, I haven't decided on what day is the best day to stream for me yet with work, but for now, I think it's Fridays. But anyways... Thanks again, Anthony, and everybody else. I'll see you probably in a couple weeks again.